Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Esther Hahn and I'm a urologist who is trained in female pelvic medicine and reconstructive surgery. I am with the Orlando Health Medical Group. Today's taboo topic is pelvic organ prolapse. If you think about your vagina, you can think about it as a curtain rod at the top with two panels. And each panel represents the bladder and the rectum. And at the very top, the curtain rod would be your uterus and cervix if you had one or just the cuff if you've had a hysterectomy. Basically, pelvic organ prolapse is when the curtain rod falls or the panels get torn um, or they end up getting stretched out. So one or any of those walls can start coming out of the vaginal opening. Symptoms of pelvic organ prolapse commonly are described as a bulge or pressure sensation at the vaginal opening. If the woman is not bothered by it, it's something that we don't have to correct. However, I also have women presenting with everything completely inverted, um, meaning when they come in, the bulge is there and we're looking straight at their cervix and essentially their uterus is on the outside of their body. Pelvic organ prolapse is often caused by childbirth. So yes, you can blame your kids for this. The more kids you have, usually the higher your risk. Um, generally speaking, vaginal deliveries can certainly be natural, but they are not atraumatic in nature, and they can cause damage to your tissues as well as your nerves. Interestingly, research actually shows that those with fair skin, light hair, light eyes tend to have a higher risk for prolapse. Um, it tends to deal with the tissue consistency. I've definitely had females um, come in because they all of a sudden were showering and then they found this bulge and it freaked them out and they went to the ER and, and then they were referred to, um, to see me. Uh, in general, like we discussed, you don't have to do anything. However, sometimes it does impede a woman to completely empty her bladder and that can actually lead to some recurrent infection issues. Sometimes if it's been outside for a while, the pressure of sitting on it can cause some sores. Um, other times, um, women have to push everything and reduce everything back in just to have a bowel movement, similarly to emptying their bladder, you know, pushing everything in to empty their bladder. So those are all indications of, of when we may have to do something about it. For all of those who think that they might have some prolapse going on, don't be embarrassed. It happens much more often than you think. Um, and you don't want to wait until it's late in the game. Um, what I mean by that is I often see much older women coming in and they're brought in by their family. And at that point in time, um, they have a much higher risk for surgery. Um, and sometimes that's the only thing we can do to help them empty their bladder, et cetera. I often get women asking me, what can I do? What can I do? Can I have intercourse? Um, you can, you can have intercourse even if uh, you've got a bulge issue. Um, basically, it's more of a discomfort for the woman herself, but there should not be any fear of hurting any of those organs. Pelvic floor physical therapy is um, a huge pillar for treatment. Um, if it's mild to moderate, generally uh, you can see a very significant improvement in symptoms. If you have a moderate to severe bulge or prolapse, oftentimes physical therapy won't be able to reduce it completely uh, to the point where you don't feel those symptoms. And at that point in time, we often have to discuss surgery. The surgical options are generally minimally invasive in the sense that if we go through the abdomen to fix it, it's done robotically or laparoscopically nowadays. Um, and then we also have the option of going vaginally, which um, I would probably uh, you know, put that in the minimally invasive category as well. After treatment, we generally recommend um, surgical treatment. We recommend six weeks of recovery where we uh, discourage any heavy lifting over a gallon of milk. Um, heavy bowel regimen so that you're not straining and putting extra pressure on the repair. Um, if you have a vaginal incision, then um, definitely no tub baths, swimming pools, going in the ocean for six weeks, and of course, no intercourse for six weeks. So make sure you seek out a physician if you think you may have some symptoms that you want checked out. Thanks for watching this edition of Taboo Topics.